Hey everybody, welcome back to all of us, to me, to you, to all of us. It is Thursday, September somebody. I don't be knowing my dates. And I am back from Miami and Orlando. Um, I had an awesome, super good time. And let me tell y'all, law of attraction, the universe, God is all good. It's just amazing when you set the tone of your life. What do you expect from your life? Is your life filled with emergencies and crises? Is your life filled with awesome surprises and good things and bubblegum lollipops and little puppies and cute babies that you don't have to change because they don't belong to you? That's what my life is filled with. I'm just so happy and I don't take it for granted. So not taking it for granted means this. I told y'all on my emergency budget meeting, the update, that I was down to $59, right? So, if I took it for granted, I would be like, mm, I'm down to $59, but it don't matter. Something's going to work out, so I'm just going to spend all my money, and that's cool. And that's what it is, right? But no, I always be my, I'm mindful of my spending, and I'm super respectful of my money and my dollars. And I don't take anything for granted because what God gives you, he can take away. Or what? <laughs> There's a better way of saying that. But a lot of you understand the concept of, God gives, God takes away. But technically, God put a lot of laws into this earthly plane that we live on that he gives us to work within. And it's up to us to learn those laws, to study those lessons, and use them to manifest our lives because God promised us a lot of things, a lot of abundance. But he also said that this is the way it will work. It works like this. Um, you know, like the concept of sin means if you do this, if you do that, if you do this, then these things will happen. But it's not so much sin. It's going against the laws that he put on this planet for you to work within. And the laws are true. I'm just going to pull over real quick because I'm talking. <laughs> I got issues because <laughs> I really do need to get to work. But we talking. So the laws are so true that you can't defy the laws. You can't say, I'm an exception to the rules or I'm an exception to the law. You're not. None of us are. And it works good and it works not so good. Some say good or bad, but there's no such thing. It just is, right? So the bottom line is, I was like, okay, I'm down to $59, guys. This is how I'm going to adjust and this is how I'm going to survive with that $59 because I can't take anything for granted and I won't take anything for granted, right? So I put that video out. And then I went to Miami. And so, of course, Jay, my boyfriend, for those of you who don't know, he watches my videos. <laughs> so when I get there, you know, we went to Target because I don't always carry everything. I'm like, hmm, I need flip-flops. Let me just buy some flip-flops there. That way I can leave them there. And so I was doing little things like that, like buying some little things that I needed that I was going to keep there. So when it came time to pay for it, he is trying to pay for my stuff. And I'm like, oh, no, Jay, this is good. This is my stuff. I'm going to pay for it. Like, he's like, no, I watched your video. You're down to $59. I ain't going to have you going back and making a video about how you spent all your money because blah, 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 blah. So it was so funny because he was trying not to have me spend my money so that I can come back home with my money. Um, but as y'all know, I budget for these things and it feels so good. So if I budget $300 to go to Miami, which is what I did, I don't mind spending what I prepared for especially when I'm just buying things for myself I don't sit back and expect him to pull out his wallet for my things that I'm picking up right but he does it anyway so it was so funny so we compromised he allowed me to purchase some things and then I allowed him to purchase some things so it was so funny so I say all of that oh and then we went to Orlando and we stayed at a timeshare that we had for free. We got it for, we had a seven day timeshare thing. And I was like, Hey, might as well just try to use it. We didn't have seven days, but I was like, we'll use, I think we were there for like three days or two and a half days or something. So of course, while we were there, they was like, Oh, if you do a timeshare tour, we'll give you $150. I'm, I got $59. 
to my name. I am so down. So we did the timeshare tour, y'all, and we got an additional 150. So guys, I came back to here home and I spent maybe a hundred dollars. I spent maybe a hundred dollars and that hundred dollars includes me parking at the airport for the four or five days that I parked at the airport, which came to like $41. Yeah, I just thought that was so dope because we was able to have this amazing time. We went to the seafood boil restaurant and we was able to do all of that on that dime that we got from doing that timeshare tour. So now I'm back, guys, and a lot of people ask me, how am I able to take so many vacations and I have a full-time day job? Um... And with my day job, I have like seven weeks of vacation because I negotiated for that because I'm all about this vacation lifestyle. Um, but even with that, I probably do take more than seven weeks of vacation a year because I'm addicted to travel. I love it. That's why I love that Jay lives in Miami because I love going out there to visit him because it just feeds that vacation bug that needs to be fed in me. Um, but what I do is what I'm about to do now. When I come back, I make up as much time as humanly possible so that I don't have to use a lot of my vacation time. So right now I took about 24 hours of vacation, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, I just counted on my fingers. Yeah, so I took 24 hours of vacation and now it's Thursday and I'm going to try to make up that 24 hours. I have this week, the rest of this week and next week to make it up in addition to working my normal eight hour days that I have to work. So the goal today is to work at least 10 hours and the goal tomorrow is to work at least 10 hours. It's already 8 30. I'm still not at work. And that's what we're doing for this week. And I just wanted to jump on camera really quick and let you guys know that check in with you guys and give you a quick update because I know I'm going to be super behind and up in editing these vacation videos that I've been doing. I'm so behind on my vacation videos. But um, Hey y'all, happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. So today we is eight o'clock. I'm still like behind times with getting up super early and getting my life started. So um, it's 8 a.m. I still have the goal today to work 10 or more hours. I did 10 hours yesterday, yay. And, um, I, my taxes are finalized. So let me tell you guys the update on that. So remember last time we talked, I told you about what I owed and everything. And so finding out what I owed, I went back home and fixed the stuff that I was lazy on. For instance, I calculated my mileage for my rental business because that's super easy. What I don't always calculate my thing for is when I'm um, doing miles for my other businesses and that's for like YouTube business for consultations for things like that like when I did the radio interview for my channel and for my book sales and things um, I don't always calculate that stuff and I get too lazy to go back and trace my steps well y'all when he first told me what I owed federal taxes I said there has got to be a better way and I went home and I pulled out my calendars and all of that stuff and I retraced my miles for that and I submitted those things back to him. So my final total on what I owe in federal taxes is $3,304. Okay. I am going to go to my one bank. I keep my um, bank account separate and get a cashier's check for $3,304 to pay the federal government my taxes. Now, that doesn't include interest, so I'm sure, I believe, I'm not sure how it works. And then the state owes me back. I'm getting a refund from the state of $1,399. So when I get that refund back, I'm going to just put that entire refund back into that savings account that I'm paying my taxes from. And so what that means at the end of the day, I am paying a total of $1,905 
to taxes when I deduct what I'll be refunded and what I owe. And let me say this because I know sometimes, you know, I get up here and I get and I just get into a sermon and the sermon get good to me. But a lot of the reason is because guys, I get emails. I get questions and comments. I get questions in real life. People are always asking me the how to's because they see these miracles pop up in my life. Like how one day I can say, y'all, I got a dollar. And then the next day I say, guys, guess what? I just won $200. Like that stuff happens to me all the time. And I can never truly fully explain the hows because a lot of it is nuance. There's so much nuance to the law of attraction. There's so much nuance to positive thinking. There's so much nuance to your words becoming your life that the only way I can really kind of talk about it is in these moments of it really happening in my life and then when it becomes applicable and I got my camera on and I'm talking and, and it just comes out the way it comes out. And so, like I said, I believe that you train your life how to treat you, just like you train people how to treat you. However you train somebody how to treat you, that's the treatment you will receive, whether it's from your kids, whether it's from your spouse or your partner, whether it's from your parents or your siblings or your friends. It's all energy and you get to conduct the transactions of what you put out and what you get back and what you get and what you give. You get to, you get to talk, you get to control all of that. You really do. And if you believe you don't, that's only because you like the drama and that's only because you like being in the space of being a victim and being a look what they did to me person. With that being said, I believe that it's the same interaction with God. We let God know what kind of treatment we'll, we like. And the why I say that is because we always think God is judgmental in the terms of this is good, this is bad. He's not. He don't care. He don't care. Man made up these rules. Man made up what the definition of rich is. What the definition of currency is. God didn't say, here's a dollar, go spend it. No, man, we did that. We started trading cowrie shells and, and jewels and things like that. Then we created this cash system on this planet. And we assigned value to all of that. Then we're the ones who said, if we live in this kind of house, it's good. If we live over there in a tent, ooh, we're not doing so well. God didn't put that out there for us. So as far as God is concerned, if you want to live in a tent, on the side of a highway, it's all good. You get to do that and he will support you in that. But if you want something different, that's good too. And he will support you in that. So it's our job to say to God, hey God, this is how I would like to be supported on this planet. And the thing about that, saying it is one thing, but walking it is another. And a lot of times we do a lot of mouth service, but we don't walk the walk. You know, you can't just talk the talk. You have to back it up with the walk. And so... When I was telling you yesterday about the fact that I was down to $59, but then the universe was like, oh, here you go. Because I feel like I've already trained my vibration to say, I like abundance. I like saving my money. I like having money. I like it all. I like to do what I want to do, but I don't like running out of money and so the universe supports me in that by saying oh here you go here you go here you go but I believe also I'm a good steward of the gifts that I receive I don't take it for granted and I don't just dismiss it and forget about the whole gratitude aspect of things okay and so I say that also to say that even with my taxes I know I made the video about this is what I owe and some people's like oh you should be grateful or whatever I'm always grateful guys because in the, the bottom line is I can afford to owe what I owe that is such a blessing the fact is because I set up emergency funds and any advice I ever give anybody I listen to my own advice first because I do that I'm always in a space to be able to handle things as they pop up so it's not detrimental but let's be real guys don't nobody want to owe the government anything trust me there is plenty on this planet for the government to be okay without the bit of money that we have right and the fact of the matter is there are people who would make way more than we make and they pay way less than we pay. Why? Because they know the rules of this game. They know how to structure their year so that they don't have 
so that they only have to pay but so much. My thing is, if there's rules, I need to learn those rules so I can apply those same principles to my own life. And so that when the time comes to pay taxes, guess what? I only owe the very minimum as well. So that was my thing. It's like, what? But because they changed the game mid-game, not even mid-game, but because they changed the game at the end of the game, it did not give people a chance to properly prepare for it and to properly structure for it. Of course, there are some people say, oh, well, I got a refund or I got a this or I got a that. But trust, baby, it's not because you planned it that way. It's because it was happenstance. It just so happened to work out that way for you. Um, and so, and just like me, I owe taxes, not because I planned to owe taxes, but just because that's the way the cookies crumbled for me. I have a coworker who is like, Oh, what did he call it? Did he say an ASL tax? It was some tax that he said him and his wife always have to pay. He explained it to me and what it was. Basically, if you made over a certain amount, you fell into this one category where you had to pay this one tax that always got them like about four or five thousand that they had to pay because of that. And he said, well, this year was the first year that they didn't have to pay that because of the way the tax laws changed. They were now protected. So he was happy. He was happy with what happened with the taxes. Yeah, let's not act like anybody ever does us any favors when it comes to taxes. All it is is a matter of games. It's a matter of rules. And it's a matter of you knowing the rules so that you can position yourself accordingly. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm on my way to work. Later, babes. Oh, oh, oh. Don't forget to thumbs up if you're rocking with me. Thumbs down if you're not rocking with me. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a fab, fun, and budget family member. And leave a comment if you agree with my assessment or if you don't agree with my assessment. We can have a conversation. I love conversations with you all. All right, y'all. Bye for real this time.